Hey, 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 today is National Waffle Day. Yes, it's National Waffle Day. And when I say waffle, I mean the breakfast food, not the hemming and hawing over something. Mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. No, I'm talking about waffles. So, of course, it is the afternoon here in the Chicago area, so it might be a little late for some people to celebrate National Waffle Day unless you decide to have maybe breakfast for dinner or go out and get some chicken and waffles. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what you have planned for your Friday dinner. But there is something that I do know, and that is the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer. I'm back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, <laughs> presented by TheGamingGang.com. I don't know why I said it that way. The Daily Dope. Just The Daily Dope. Jeez, I'm acting like a dope already today. So today is Friday, August 24th. Welcome aboard. I've got some news today. I also am going to unbox and take my first look at... Archmage. This is the collector's edition from Starling Games. That's something that I am very intrigued about because it sounds pretty interesting. And if you caught my review of Everdell, I really enjoyed Everdell. And uh, I've got a review of Black Orchestra coming up next week, too. So a lot of Starling Games goodness, uh, both uh, already out there and on the horizon. So before I jump in, do want to mention that uh, there is no show Tuesday. So uh, in a little bit after I do the news, I'm going to talk about what's on shows next week. Don't have a show on Tuesday. I've got a doctor's appointment. So it's probably going to be uh, kind of an all day one. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm getting closer to doing the uh, second stent. Ugh. Not something I'm too thrilled about, but hey, got to do it. Got to do it. All right, so anyway, do you want to point out this is a live stream? And uh, if you haven't watched before, kick back, relax. This is very casual. It's not brain surgery by any stretch of the imagination. I just chat about games. So do you want to point out that there is chat available on YouTube if you are watching live? And I do want to mention it's not on screen. So that's one of the ways that I kind of keep some of the um, otter commenters at bay but i do watch the chat so if you want to say hello if you have a question if you want to get a closer look at something when i'm doing the unboxing for archmage by all means type something out i will respond okay so let's jump into the news <coughs> and i have to apologize i still have that bronchitis going on but whiz kids has just released a new hidden trader fantasy game and i've got the dope on doppelganger almost wanted to pronounce it doppelganger right have the dope on doppelganger but it's doppelganger i'm telling you something isn't right whined the rogue shut it tanlin and keep your mind on the quest before us no more talk of seeing a doppelganger bagram the barbarian readied his great sword for the encounter ahead as the rest of the party drew close. This will not end well, Tanlin replied. She kept her hand resting on the familiar weight of her dagger's pommel. Someone here was a traitor, if only she knew who. Doppelganger is a hidden role game designed by Steve Avery and Robert Burke. Each player takes the role of an intrepid adventurer who will help the group overcome great perils. However, some among them are conniving doppelgangers who work against the party to bring their downfall. Boo, hiss, boo. Each turn, the players confront a challenge that requires teamwork. The party leader selects which adventurers will help him win the encounter. Everyone selected contributes a card to the pool, and others are added from the draw pile. The party leader then distributes one item to each party member to help them in their quest. Success brings rewards and moves the party closer to uncovering the hidden truth. Failure brings pain 
and moves the doppelgangers one step closer to victory. Doppelganger feels like a fast cooperative dungeon delve, but with the added tension of a significant mistrust. Doppelganger is for four to eight players, ages 10 and up, and plays in around 45 minutes. The game is available right now and does carry an MSRP of $24.99. Huh. I have to say, $25 for this game seems like a pretty fair price. Uh, if you notice uh, in some of the images I'm, I'm sharing, they show kind of a, a complete layout of the components. Looks like there's a pretty good amount of uh, goodies in there. Plus it's for four to eight players. That's a pretty cool number of players because there aren't a whole lot of eight player games out there on the market. One thing that I am kind of curious about is it says it's for ages 10 and up. I know. Do 10-year-olds play very well with a hidden trader mechanic? I have no idea. I don't play games with 10-year-olds. I'm just curious. So Doppelganger is available right now, as far as I understand. So there are two new uh, zone books that have arrived for Mutant Year Zero from Free League. And I've got the dope. It's the end of the world as we know it and you'll be fine. Thank you, Michael Stipe. Do you plan to survive the end of the world? Of course you do. Mutant Year Zero Week kicks off with new releases, brand new posters, and a massive sale launch to make life enjoyable in the post-apocalyptic zone. There is the Mutant Year Zero Zone Compendium Number 4, The Eternal War. Slowly, the robots boot up again. It feels... Its circuits wake up, system after system coming online. Recharging and repairs are complete. The robot runs a quick diagnostic scan of its key functions. 73% capacity. We'll have to do. The order must be completed. The robot draws its laser rifle and assumes a firing stance, bracing the rifle on a rusty metal beam scarred by enemy fire. The robot scans the darkness. Large drone cranes hang from the ceiling high above like huge claws. Rusty old submarines rest silently in the black waters below. Unit KAN-738 reports day 7... I'm sorry, I should say day 7,298. The operations continues. The enemy must be destroyed. The operations continues. That's not proper grammar. Anyway, about the Eternal War, the Zone Compendium... For Mutant Year Zero and Mutant Mechatron introduces four exciting special zone sectors. The Eternal War. Robot fights robot in an underground duel without end. Fort Robot. An abandoned Wild West themed amusement park from the old age has new artificial inhabitants. North Bay Nandeep 23. The warning message from the ancient farming facility contains only two words. Warning. Nano contamination. Wait a second, that's three words, guys. Jeez, what's going on with this press release? The robot factory. Thick smoke rises from the smokestacks of the old dilapidated factory in the zone. Who has moved in? Then there is Mutineer Zero Zone Compendium 5. Hotel Imperator. In the dimly lit room, serious-looking men and women sit around a long table. At the short end, a man with long silvery hair and wearing a black suit presides over the meeting. His left eye lacks both iris and pupil, and the white of it tinged by an unnatural icy blue. An old machine on the table projects a photo of a scrap village on the wall. The room to the room opens. I should say the door to the room opens. Slap. What I can't read today. So no, that is my mistake. That was not something that was in the press release. The door to the room opens. Two people enter cloaked in shadows. Number two and number three report, the white-haired man demands. Thank you, number one. One of the newcomers responds, we have much to do. You are number eight. About Hotel Imperator. The Zone Compendium Hotel Imperator for Mutineer Zero includes four exciting special zone sectors. Of course, there's the Hotel Imperator. The mysterious Brain Ring has established its headquarters in an ancient hotel. What are the psionics' nefarious plans? The Long Road. A nomadic tribe of mutants travel through the zone. What can the player characters learn from them? The Zone Fair. 
A robot has reopened in an ancient amusement park in the zone. A lot of amusement park action going on. What dirty secrets do its visitors bring with them? And then the great zone walker, a colossal machine is rumbling through the zone. Who controls it and where is it going? Each zone compendium is available as physical books for 1933 during this sale. If you go directly to the Free League website, they are also available in PDF from DriveThruRPG for $9.99. If you are eager to score physical copies of anything having to do with Mutineer Zero, take note that through August 31st, you can save up to 40% on all Mutineer Zero products at the Free League store. Do you have to point out that um, the zone number four is 32 pages, zone number five is 36 pages, according to Drive-Thru RPG, and sometimes Drive-Thru RPG's page counts are wrong, but I don't know, $20 for a 32 page book seems pretty pricey. $9 for a PDF, maybe. But I do have to say, the Mutant Year Zero stuff is very cool, and Free League does some very, very cool stuff. In fact, I am uh, looking forward to maybe getting a peek at it. Finished up its Kickstarter not long ago. Is it, I think it's called Forgotten Realm? Sort of a fantasy RPG, but kind of a gritty fantasy RPG that uh, is on the horizon from Free League. Okay, so pretty heavy on RPG news today because there is a new RPG core book now available in PDF from Modifius Entertainment. And of course, I've got the dope on Unity. Four factions, one destiny. Punished, forsaken, and left for dead by the divine hand that created them, four races must come together and unite against the grim horrors of a world set on fire. Explore the forgotten remnants of a once golden age when mortals rose to challenge gods. Rediscover long-forgotten ancient technologies that blur the lines between reality and wonder. Stride atop colossal mechanized machines of war from a bygone era. Embrace the discovery of new and exciting cultures in a scarred landscape full of secrets and hidden beauty. Unity is a fantasy role-playing experience focused on spectacular storytelling, cinematic moments, deep character growth, and a riveting combat system that encourages you to combine your powers with your allies to overcome impossible challenges. This book includes everything you need to play, including full role-playing rules for character creation, adventuring, and combat, a full setting guide that explores the world of Unity and its rich history, four factions complete with cultural write-ups and short stories, nine classes and hundreds of power combinations to master, there's mysterious and perilous locations to explore, as well as deadly foes to fight and powerful treasures to acquire. The core rulebook also includes a game master's guide. The 371 page PDF is available right now at DriveThruRPG for $24.99 with a physical book expected sometime in September. I have to say the artwork looks pretty cool. Definitely always dig good artwork in RPG books. Uh, seems like a pretty unique setting as well. No mention if this is a 2D20 system. Uh, I'm taking a guess it probably is not. But you can get the PDF at DriveThruRPG. And when I talk about DriveThruRPG, I always mention that the Gaming Gang is an affiliate. So if you are swinging over to any of the drive through websites, please click on one of our banners at thegaminggang.com first, because that way, if you do make a purchase, we get a small portion of that sale and it all really adds up. So do have yet another role-playing game news piece. And I have to say, I am always on the lookout to save you money. And there is an awesome humble bundle going on right now. Humble Bundle, not Bundle of Holding. And it's for Cubicle 7 Entertainment's award-winning The One Ring RPG in PDF. And as with all Humble Bundles, there are pay-what-you-want tiers. And for a single solitary dollar, 
you can score the core rules, the core map pack, and the journeys and map supplement, as well as a 30% off coupon from the Cubicle 7 website. So think that through one more time. For a dollar, you can get the war the one ring core rules, the journeys and map supplement, as well as the standalone download of maps for the one ring. It's I mean it's <laughs> insanely good. Seriously, for just a dollar. For a payment of eight dollars or more, you can also snag the Lore Master screen and Lake Town and the supplements into the Heart of the Wild, the Adventurer's Companion, Tales from Wilderland, Bree, as well as the Bree maps. Plus the core rules and everything else for the dollar. So that's for eight dollars. Now you can go all in for a payment of fifteen dollars or more and also receive Oaths of the Rittermark, Ruins of the North, Eridor, er, I should say Erebor, the Lonely Mountain, the Horse Lords of Rohan, Rivendell, the Darkening of Mirkwood, and all of the associated map packs, which I believe all of those except for one have map packs. Plus everything that was for the $8 tier, as well as the core rules and everything else. I gotta say, this is an incredible deal, as you're essentially getting everything that's available, to my knowledge, for the one ring in PDF, and it is a $270 value for a paltry 15 bucks. And if you have not checked out the one ring, it is a fantastic RPG. And if you are in any way interested in adventuring or running games in the world of J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, you owe it to yourself to have this as part of your collection. So you can't go wrong for 15 bones. And you're also going to be doing good for a charity too, because Water Aid UK is the designated charity for the One Ring Bundle. So... There are 12 days left for you to be able to score all of that. I mean, we're talking thousands of pages of the one ring goodness for $15. I mean, that's that's insane. That's honestly, it's almost 95% off the um the MSRP. I mean, it's it's wild, totally wild. So I will definitely have uh these news pieces up later on as well. Should mention, while I'm on the topic of Cubicle 7, that the finalized copy of 4th edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is up on Drive-Thru RPG. I know they had, uh, C7 had released the preview copy, uh, which was almost the complete book. I mean, it was, ma- it was mainly the complete book. It just had a few tweaks that needed to be taken care of. There were, there were a couple of errors that need to be addressed. So the finalized copy is up on Drive-Thru RPG. If you've already purchased it and downloaded it, be sure to go to Drive-Thru RPG so you can get the updated PDF. If you have not, and you live under a rock because I have had a lot of coverage about Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, the fourth edition, uh, over the past few weeks, if you live under a rock, you can score the role-playing game at Drive-Thru RPG for $29.99. <clears throat> and I uh, am really hoping, fingers crossed, that I can get a physical copy when I think the physical copies should be coming out maybe in September, uh, early October. I know the uh, the finalized uh, edition on drive through RPG basically means that that has been sent to the printers. So uh, I don't know. I'm thinking September, October is when we should be seeing that. So pretty cool. Okay, so before I jump into my unboxing and first look at Archmage from Starling Games, let me tell you what's on the horizon for next week. And as I mentioned, no show on Tuesday. So on Monday, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Legends of Andor. Uh, looks pretty cool. This is from Cosmos Games. I have never actually played a Cosmos game. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad. Uh, but I did, uh, did interview Lily DeSisto at Gen Con, and she was kind enough to give me a review copy of Legends of Andor. 
to uh, kind of kick the tires on my uh, coverage style. So that will be on Monday. No show Tuesday. On Wednesday for War Game Wednesday, I am going to review Black Orchestra from Starling Games. This is a, a very cool game where uh, all the players are actually conspirators trying to assassinate Hitler uh, before and during World War II. So that will be on Wednesday. On Thursday, love to do RPGs on Thursdays. If you uh, popped in and caught yesterday's show, I did a first look at uh, Outbreak Undead 2nd Edition Survivor's Guide, as well as the Dungeons and Dragons Adventures Outlined Coloring Book. So I had a lot of fun with those. So on Thursday, I will be reviewing Warhammer 40K Wrath and Glory from my friends over at Ulysses North America. Another RPG that I have had a lot of coverage of over the past, uh, actually since Origins Game Fair, really. So I'll give you a hint. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sort of curious how uh, third edition, uh, well, actually, it's really not third edition. It's the Fantasy Flight Games Warhammer 40K. I'm kind of curious how fans of that system are going to take to this. So I will discuss that on Thursday as well. Then on Friday, what I'll be doing is I'll actually cover the game that I was planning on doing on Tuesday. And I will unbox and take a first look at War Chest from AEG. This is a an abstract war game for two or four players. Looks pretty interesting. I did get to see a bit of a demo at Gen Con, so uh, pretty sweet. So that's what's coming up on next week's episodes of The Daily Dope. Okay, so without further ado, let's start talking about Archmage from Starling Games. It's designed by Tim Harima. I'm guessing. Hopefully I got, or maybe it's Hirema. Uh, with art provided by Engar Adarasa and Dan May. The game is for one to four players, ages 14 and up, and it plays in about one to two hours. I am going to be taking a look at the Collector's Edition, which was available at Gen Con, and it can be ordered from the Starling Games website for $80. There is a retail edition that's scheduled to arrive sometime, I believe it's before October, and my indications I've heard is it will carry an MSRP of $50. I am not positive on that because I got that info from a distributor who on occasion does not have the correct MSRP. So if I look at say Everdell, which the collector's edition, which is what I reviewed of Everdell does carry an MSRP of $80. The retail edition on that will carry an MSRP of 60. So I wouldn't be shocked if the MSRP is actually 60 and not 50. But I don't know uh, if I ever get like official word on that. I won't definitely share that, but at least to give you a heads up. There is a retail edition that is on the horizon. So let's switch on over to the other camera here. And I have already kind of slit the uh, the shrink wrap. So this, as I mentioned, is the collector's edition. I do believe the box art is going to be different a little bit for the collector's edition as opposed to the retail edition. So I can tell right now there's already kind of a sleeve on the box. So let's slide that off, put that right there. So, oh, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there isn't, because I could have swore that, uh, well, maybe the retail edition has the Archmage down here. So that's a possibility. I do not know. Uh, Archmage is basically, as I mentioned, it's for one of four players and each of the players is a mage and they are trying to become the Archmage. There's a mysterious Archmage, I believe, who has disappeared. <coughs> Excuse me. And the, uh, the players are all vying to take her place. So I believe there's some area control in this. 
Uh, I believe each of the uh, each of the mages will have like followers and stuff like that. So let's take a look at the back of the box here. Magic. It has always been, but now it exists only in rumors, whispers, and prophecies. As a fledgling mage, you set out to explore the land, uncover lost relics, meet with mythic races, gather followers, and train apprentices. Build and lead your order of mages and become the Archmage, a wizard that weaves all six spheres of magic into one. Archmage is a hybrid of Euro-style and thematic board games featuring exploration, resource management, area map control, and a spell system where players shape a tableau of player powers over the course of the game. Hoo hoo hoo. Interesting. Okay, so it is for ages 14 and up. Usually when I see it's for ages 14 and up, I'll say something like, well, I'm I'm sure that's probably because it's got small components and things like that. I will it looks like there are some small components in this, but I do believe that this is actually one of the meatier, one of the heavier strategy games that's available from Starling Games. So it's very possible that 14 and up really is the age range, not just because of the components. But then again, that doesn't mean that uh, if you got a 12 year old who's really big into games and, and they you know, catch on to everything right away, doesn't mean you can't bust the game out. So let's see what we've got. So we got a rule book here. Well, I'll tell you what, everything looks pretty nice so far. See, there's like these dials here. That looks pretty cool. So we've got the rules, let's take Pete. So we get uh, a little bit of uh, background, background story there. The sixfold nature of magic. So we've got matter, time, will, death, blood, and nature. So it talks about how these spheres overlap. Talking about fundamental spells, advanced spells, and master spells. So we can see that the, the larger circle is the fundamental spell. And then where we see like an uh, an overlap of, so it would be two, no, maybe three. No, it's three. We see an overlap of three different uh, spheres of magic. Then that's an advanced spell. It looks like if uh, you have the overlap of all six, those are master spells. So they're talking about the different apprentices. So we got mythic races, we got elves, dwarves, goblins, demons, dryads, and gnomes. The hybrid races, we have the drow, trolls, and gremlins. The land and its relics. So we're talking about the uh, spheres of magic, nature, matter, time, will, death, blood. So we've got uh, relics, could be seeds, widgets, scrolls, gems, bones, and blood. Talking about where you would find these, what races are associated with them. So we've got the game set up. So we've got a ruined city tile and 42 location tiles. So it looks like your map is going to be different every game. Got, uh, geez, four mages, four mage towers, and a hundred followers. The tower boards, planet tokens, relic cubes, spell decks. So it talks about the lands and the mages. So we've got a two-player setup, three-player setup, and a four-player setup. Talking about the art of spell casting. So it's talking about the spell cards. Talking about the description, casting costs. Talking about the player turn. So you've got preparation, journey, journey's end. You can deploy your followers, move across land, attack, and then your journeys end. It's so like you can gather, recruit, initiate, place wards, build your mage tower, initiate and promote apprentices. Apprentices. Hmm. Then we got the end game. Final scoring. Then we got credits, then we got some spell clarifications. We got advanced spells, the master spells. And then solitaire play. Sweet. I always like uh, seeing some solitaire rules. Always dig that. 
So uh, maybe you're battling a warlord. It's almost what it kind of looks like. Warlord's journey phase. The warlord is quite bad. His movement is erratic and only minimally predictable. All right, cool deal. Uh, All together, we're looking at, if we take the solitaire rules out, 20 pages. It's like quite a few different examples for us too, though. So, but yeah, uh, it does look like there's, uh, there's some meat on the bones here for this game. All right, so we've got the rules. Then it looks like we've got uh, kind of a player aid chart, which uh, there was one of those in Everdell as well. It's talking about the setup, basic concepts. So there we go. We've got that. Okay, and then we've got, it looks like each player is going to get, this is pretty cool. You can see there's kind of, kind of cut out here. Uh, it looks like each player is going to get one of these. I guess these are spell boards. So, really nice. Very, uh, very nice, sturdy stock here. Very cool. So, we've got four of these. And they're all identical. So, that's cool. Yeah. It's very nice. I like, uh, I'm going to take a guess. You're going to have like cubes you can drop in here. So with them being cut out, they're going to drop and fit right in here. I'm sure maybe these are, uh, maybe these are races or something that are going to go up there. I'm not sure, but I like how it's, uh, you can actually, you know, a lot of times you got a game where this would just be a, just a solid piece of cardstock. And then you'd have to, you know, you're dropping cubes and stuff on here. And then if somebody uh, bumps the table, everything goes flying. Everything moves all over the place. Won't have that problem with these. So that's sweet. Okay, we got some punch boards. So what do we got here? What do we got here? Oh. Looks like you also will get, basically, it looks like this is a kind of... A card where it's going to talk about like uh, things you can do on your turn because it shows preparation phase, journey phase, journeys end phase. Well, I can see these are cut really nicely. <laughs> right there, you can see how uh, these are cut really nicely because boom, just fell right out. But looking at the back here, oh, these are the different spells. So there's summaries of each of the spells too. Sweet. Very nice. I gotta be honest, I don't know what's different in the collector's edition as opposed to what the retail edition may be. Uh, now, there was a sheet in Everdell telling you what was in that collector's edition where, <coughs> excuse me, you had, you had the uh, metal coins, you had the expansion. Uh, so there's there were extra goodies. So I'm not sure what might be in the collector's edition that's not in retail. So here we've got uh, this. I believe this is the this is the ruined city tile. So we've got that. Then it looks like we've got four of these, and it's showing fundamental, advanced, and master. So I, I'm guessing each of the players are going to get one of these to uh, to have their spell cards alongside or. Maybe they're above. That's a possibility. Then we got some tokens. Looks like uh, looks like these might be some of the races that you encounter. So we've got that. Then we've got the location tiles, which I think it said there were 42 of these location tiles. And we've got, uh, it just uh, looks like some counters, some various different marker tokens. It's got those. We've got, we've got more of the location tiles. We've got a library, a mine, town. And as I mentioned, it looks like everybody's gonna get one of these uh, kind of turn aids. And then we've got more of these. So we've got uh, ruins, camp, 
looks like uh, each uh, we've got gremlins, trolls, and drow. Looks like they have maybe uh, their own locations. Only a single location, because I believe the other races were um, like I I could have swore I thought I saw like the dryads are part of the um, groves. So of course dual sided. Then it looks as if we've got uh, some a couple of pads. Oh, they're stuck together, though. Come on, there we go. For each of the players. Yeah, okay. So we're just going to use that sheet there. It's so got two pads. We've got a board. Not real huge. It's about the size. No, oh, I think Everdell was about this size as well. So you can lay out the different areas, the different lands. We see that uh, they're showing off kind of the, the different mages. Different mages here. I like the artwork. The artwork's pretty cool. All right, so that is the board there. Then we've got, uh, I don't know, this looks like some sort of a tower, a big tower meeple. I don't think that's, I don't think that that's your mage tower because it's only the one and it looks like it would fit together. So I'm not sure what that might be. Uh, looks like, it's like each of the players will have a large size meeple representing them. And then this gray one, I'm taking a guess the gray one may be for the solitaire play. Might be the uh, the, the warlord. That's a possibility. And then we've got these, uh, these green tokens. So I'm curious, didn't I just see something that was like that on these punch boards? Maybe not. No, I think I'm thinking of these these here that I just saw. So we've got these green ones. Then we've got gray. I think these are followers. Yep, these are followers. So we've got followers in gray, brown, white, and blue. So obviously enough, this gray wizard here is not the warlord, but it's possible maybe this, no, there's the purple. So what's the, uh, what's the color that we don't have here? No, no, that's right. It, it is the purple. So we've got gray, brown, white, and blue. So I'm taking a guess the purple probably represents that warlord. Looks like these are the wizard towers here. That's kind of cool, and they're all different. They're not the same exact uh, kind of cut. They're not the same exact... Uh, I don't want to say it's a meeple. I mean, it's big. It's a tower. So that's cool. And then we got some discs. We've got different colored discs. We've got different colored cubes. No doubt representing, yep, each of the schools, or I should say spheres of magic. Looks like because there's six and there are three colors in each of these with four of each cube so that no doubt is going to be used on your your player board then we've got some discs as well so we've got the cubes and discs as far as the uh the colors of these schools of magic spheres i keep saying schools it's spheres of magic in this got a six-sided die Got a cool draw bag. Whoa, we got four draw bags. All right, nice. Not cheaply done, so that's cool. So we got those. And then we've got the spell cards. So let's uh, let's pop the spell cards open. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, I just used my hobby knife to slice the top. put the 
cap back on it because I don't need to be wearing that in my arm or my hand or something. Okay. Quite a few cards. Looks like there might be, uh, I don't know, maybe a hundred. I'll tell you what. They've got a really cool kind of foil look to them, kind of a 3D. They all like this? Looks like they are all like this. So I'm going to take a stab at the collector's edition. This is, oh, it's trippy, kids. Uh, I'm going to take a guess that maybe these cards are specifically for the collector's edition. So uh, we're not going to look through all of these, but let's take a peek at a few. Let's see what we've got. And, well, actually, they've got them by deck. So they've got these by mage. So let's see. I've got that one, that one. Huh, that's weird. I just kind of grabbed it, and it was right at, <laughs> at that deck. That's strange. Okay, so we'll take a look at one of the mage decks here. So we've got uh, Automatron. I'm hypnotizing you folks out there with this card. Take one of your followers from any ruins location on the map and place it in any fundamental spell area on your tower board. If this area was previously unoccupied, immediately update your spell book to include this spell. Corrupt. Fortify. Obliterate. Though I do have to point out that, uh, thankfully, there's icons. So we can see that that's blood right there. And that's, uh, that's death magic right there. Uh, because the colors kind of get a little odd to try to make out with this, uh, this kind of holographic foil kind of finish to it. Uh, we've got obliterate, time stop. And I can see here in this corner... It looks like this is probably a, like a master spell. I might be wrong, but I'm taking a guess. It might be a master spell because it's got sort of that, that symbol on it. Yep, sure enough. So this looks like if we take a look up in the corner there, it looks like this is a, uh, an advanced spell. So we've got Wellspring, Transmute, Subjugate. Stone skin. Yep. Torment. Inflame. So I think I think this was I think this might be kind of a, a fundamental spell because of that symbol there. And we've got that inflame, corrosion. Befuddle? Yeah, that's me. I'm in a constant state like that. Uh, shadow. Quicken. Imprison. Gate. Fiery chasm. Entangling vines. Divination. And decay. Ooh. So, I'm uh, pretty sure they all have the same. Yep. So, everybody's got access to the same spells. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that every one of the mages will eventually have the same spells. Uh, of course, that'll be based upon how they play the game, obviously enough. So, we've got the four mage decks with the various different spells. We've got four draw bags, We've got a six sided die. We got the different discs and cubes. We've got a bunch of baggies in here so we can separate all of the uh, different tokens. We've got the towers. We've got the mages as well as the purple warlord. We've got the different followers, 25 of each is my guess in each of these bags. We've got this big tower, which maybe this is like the warlord's tower. And then we've got these uh, light green, kind of like uh, lime green tokens here. I'm not sure what those represent. And then we've got all these sheets of really well cut. 
Actually, you know what? Let's put the board in. Let's put the board in first. And then uh, we also have these two pads for uh, for gameplay. Then we've got... What was it? Didn't we have four of these? I think we've got four punch boards. Whoops. This is popping right out. Got to be careful grabbing these. These are going to fly all over the place. We've got... Yep, we got those. Then we've got uh, kind of another player aid here. We've got the four different... I guess these are considered tower boards. That's my guess. Because there was a mention of tower boards. So this is where each of the mages will be uh, tracking all of their their proficiency, I guess we would say, in each of the spheres of magic. And then we've got the rules. And that is what we find when we take everything from the Archmage Collector's Edition outside the box. As I mentioned, this is available right now. It is on the Sterling Games website. You can pick it up for $80. It was available at Gen Con. That's where I got my copy. And as I mentioned previously, I do believe there is a retail edition that is on the horizon. I think it's supposed to hit sometime before October. I could be wrong. And it's going to carry an MSRP of either $50 or $60. I know the distributor I saw says $50, but I'm not positive. So just want to let you know. Of course, that looks pretty cool. I want to, I want to dive into that. I want to check that out because I like good, meaty fantasy games. And I mean, that you have to, you know, kind of strategize and things like that, kind of plan ahead. I really, really dig that kind of stuff. All right, so stay tuned. I'll ha we'll have a review of Archmage in the very near future. Okay, so that's it for today's show. Remember, on Monday's show, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Legends of Andor. Going heavy on the fantasy lately from Cosmos Games. And uh, this, is, uh, this is one I'm really looking forward to, to checking out. So, as always, I like to say when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to go visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Come on, you know the drill by now. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. I'll be back on Monday. Until then, have a wonderful weekend. Have a very safe weekend. And thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again... Thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.